Hey everybody, this is Brian. Welcome to the 129th Qt tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. And if you haven't guessed by the look on your screen, we're going to start diving into the Qt multimedia features. Well, did I just say multimedia features? I did features. I fail at life. Sorry. Multimedia features. Um, it, it's kind of throwing me off a little bit because to do this tutorial, I have my sound going out my speakers, but I'm talking through my headset. So it's, it's kind of a little weird. If the sound quality is bad, I'll redo the whole tutorial. But um, if you read up on the cute multimedia features, you'll see there's a lot out there. And you almost have to be an expert because you're actually working with low-level data types at this point. Um, we're going to actually be covering audio, and we're going to be covering a specific type of audio. Um, as, I mean, just kind of go out and look at some of the classes here. You see they got a little bit of everything. Um, Cute is actually working, I don't want to say they're working more towards, but they're adding a lot of features specifically for like cell phones. So you'll see a lot of things with like viewfinders and cameras and things like that, which, you know, radio tuners, which may or may not actually apply to the computer you're running right now. Um, and there are specific platform notes, things like that. So you should really go out and read their information before you really dive in here. But um, I've read it, and it made actually a lot of sense. So first thing we're going to talk about is latency in audio. And latency in audio is the short period of delay, usually in milliseconds, between when an audio signal enters and when it emerges from a system. And what does that really mean? Well, if you're old school like me, you remember working directly with like raw WAV files and RIF files. Those are basically raw, uncompressed audio. So it goes directly from the desk out into the speakers, you know, once it goes to the CPU and RAM and all that gobbledygook. But point being, it just it's raw data. It just goes straight through. Whereas like an MP3, which is what we're going to be working with today, is actually like an MPG Layer 3 audio codec. And this gets into some of the complexities of working with uh, multimedia is you have different types of encoding or codecs as they're called and if you don't have the right codec on your machine the code could work fine but you can't encode or decode depending on what you're trying to do so today we're going to actually just make a very basic mp3 player um, this will be cross-platform I'm on Linux but it should run in uh, Mac Windows BSD pretty much anything so without further ado let's crack open our trusty Qt here we're going to new project we're going to make a widgets application. And you can see I've already done like a proof of concept here. We'll call it, let's just call it my player. And this is, um, you know, for audio, audio files out there, this is going to be a very bare bones basic player. We're just covering the introductory concepts here. So, first thing we do here is we've got our widgets app. And we need to actually include the multimedia framework in here. I shouldn't call it a framework. Multimedia library. There we go. Give it a save. Make sure it can actually parse the uh, the file. There we go. Um, I'm gonna try and answer some questions while we're doing this because I gotta lay out the uh, dialogue here. Um, a lot of people have been emailing me, and admittedly, uh, there's just no way I can keep up with my email. So. I've kind of just, you know, scanned through it and I've seen most of my emails now. So I have actually seen them, but I haven't had a chance to read them all. I've just been kind of scanning through the subject lines and, you know, trying to figure out what you're really asking me without diving into, you know, a 40-page email because I do actually get 40-page emails. Um, and I get a lot of students. I don't know what's up with that, but I get a lot of, hey, Brian, I love your videos. Do my homework for me. And I'm sorry, I just, I don't have time to do your homework for you. And you're in school. You should do your own homework. So basically what you see me laying out here is we're just going to do a volume and a progress. Um, originally this was going to be even basicer, much, is that even a word, basicer? Much more basic than what this is. Um, but I really decided to, you know, beef it up a little bit. Slider volume. And we call this slider progress. Um, and so, I basically, I sound like a lunatic at the moment, but what I want to reiterate here is that if you have a question, join the Void Rooms Facebook group, because there's like 150 of us out there, and I've seen a lot of 
helping hands out there. I mean, I'm not available 24 seven and there admittedly there's people in there that are smarter than me that are helping other people out. So you've got access to 150 experts. A lot of these people literally know more than I do in specific topics. So join the void realms, Facebook group. And why can't I find value? There it is. Derp. Um, Join the group, ask your questions. It's, it's meant to be an open community. Um, I don't bar anybody from entering, but um, let's keep religion and politics out of the group. This is just strictly computers and programming. So as you see, we have a progress and a volume. I've got the volume defaulted to 100%, and we've got two buttons, start and stop. So very, very basic player. Um, the premise of this is obviously when you move the slider for volume, the volume will go up and down. When you move the progress, we can you know seek through the file and It'll also move on its own as the file's played. So let's actually just do a couple things here. Go to slot. Let's do slider moved. Mm, where was it? Slider moved. And a lot of these you can do in the connections of signals and slots right in the objects, but I really want it to be you know, very easy to understand because um, this type of tutorial will generate probably 4 billion email messages and I won't have time to go through them, so I'm trying to really demystify a lot of this. Okay, so we've got our queue dialog. We're going to add in queue multimedia, player, and queue debug. It's Q Media Player. Sorry about that. Ah, I fail. And you can see how when you do Q Media, you get just tons and tons of stuff. I mean, the the media libraries in Q, I shouldn't call it libraries. The media classes in Q have just grown exponentially. Um, it's just amazing what they've done. And it's not until you really get into the low level guts of working with audio and video that you can really appreciate what the developers have actually done. Okay, so we've got our push button one, push button two, our slider clicked, um, things like that. We're going to actually add um, one more here. Um, we may add another one. We're going to avoid on duration. Changed. Oh, I can't type today. I really can't type today. And this is going to be a Q int 64. So, oh yeah, we want to do our position change too through through the magic of copy and paste. We're just going to put another one in here. Now, Quick explanation, the position change is going to be called when the file is being played through the Q Media Player and the position within the file, our current position, has changed. The duration changed is actually emitted when we load the file. It'll give you the, the full length of the file itself. Um, there's going to be a couple gotchas and caveats that I'll talk about at the end of the video that you'll need to be aware of, but we're going to try and really keep this thing simple. All right, so we've got our base class here. Let's give this a compile, make sure everything runs. We got little sliders, we got buttons. All right, let's actually start flushing this thing out here. May take me a second. Uh, oh yeah, you know what? I totally forgot to do something. There we go. We're gonna have to actually make a variable here. My bad. It's like really cold here, and my. Uh, um, my voice has been kind of going in and out all day. I'm hoping I'm not getting sick. I think it's just because it's really dry. When I say cold, I mean the, the drive to work this morning was literally negative 18 degrees. It was very cold. Very, very cold. Now, there's a lot of um, media objects out there. Why are we using Media Player? Well, we're using Media Player because for, I want to say... 90% of your tasks, you're going to either want to play a video or play an audio, and both of that can be done through Q Media Player. So rather than getting into the nitnoid intricacies of each little class, we're just going to cover these high-level classes first. 
All right, so now that we've got our Q media player, we need to connect up two signals and slots. So, and remember, I've warned you, we're going to be doing the new method of connecting signals and slots from this point forward. So we're going to say player, if I can actually spell player, and we're going to say Q media player. And we want the position changed. And we want the on position changed. Mm -hmm. There we go. And we can really quickly magic of copy and paste. I call it the magic of copy and paste because um, some of my end users, I'm actually a network administrator, um, they are. I'm not going to speak ill of them, but they are challenged on a level that is just diabolical, and it will drive you crazy. So uh, some simple things are magic. All right, so we've got the the signals and slots connected up here. Um, now what we need to do is actually load the file. That's going to be the first thing. Push button one is where we're going to load the file, and then play it. So let's say player. Yeah. And we're going to say set media. And you notice how it wants a media IO stream. Um, and it's a it's Q media content. And basically you can just give it a Q URL or Q or Q URL. Did I say that right? Q URL? Q URL. Say that three times real fast and tell me it doesn't confuse you. And we're going to do from file or I'm sorry, from local file. And if you're pretty savvy and you've paid attention through my networking tutorials, you'll notice right away that QURL um, means you can give it a, a internet address and it'll actually stream the content directly from the internet. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit here and I'm going to actually give it a file off my hard drive. Um, I will include this file with the source code out on my website, voidrealms.com which usually I plug my website towards the end, but um, I just wanted to bring it up now because when you go out to tutorials and you go out to Qt and then you look for this tutorial, this will probably be like an 8-9 meg tutorial, so it'll be a bigger download, but also because of the fun-loving nature of the internet and piracy, I have to use a file that's not copyrighted. So unfortunately, I have to use pi quite possibly the world's worst music in the history of music, and you're going to hear it here in a minute. No offense to whoever. Well, yeah, kind of offense to whoever made this music. It's horrible. Please make something better. <laughs> but uh, so we're loading the file through the set media, and then we're just going to play it. Now, a couple things are going to happen. When we do set media, it's going to fire off this duration changed, and when we hit play, it's going to start seeking through that file. But we also want some sort of notification if it failed to load it, which is where you know our handy Q debug. In a production system, you would actually do something a little more professional than do a Q-debug. And we're just going to Q-debug out an error string. Um, a lot of times you'll see that if you lack a specific codec. Once again, this code may run, but if you don't have the right decoder or codec, it won't decode the file. So there's a very real possibility that you'll download this code directly off my website and you and I just don't have the same codec, at which point, I'm sorry, I really... I can't help you figure out which codec you need. You can probably examine the properties of the MP3 file and figure it out from there. But 99% of the time, most modern operating systems, Windows, Ubuntu, Mac, yeah, they're all going to have the codec to play an MP3. All right, so then our push button two is just simply, we're just going to stop playing. And position changed. We're going to say UI, excuse me. Um, so what did I call that? Slider progress, set value, and what is the name of that position? And some of you are already screaming at your monitor. I'll address that little problem here in a second. All right, and during duration changed, we're going to say UI, what did I call that? Slider volume, nope, slider progress. Set max and position. 
So what we're really doing here is when the duration changed, when we load the file, it's going to emit the signal, which is going to give us the maximum size of that file. So we're taking that first top slider, and we're saying set the maximum to whatever the maximum of the file is. And then, let me go back here, when the position changes, aka when it's playing, we're going to set the value of that slider. So you'll actually see the slider moving across the screen. Now, when we manually move the slider, we want things to actually happen. So like slider volume here, say that four times real fast, slider volume. Anyways, um, actually we want player, sorry. We want to set the volume. So we're going to set the volume of the music to the position. And then the progress, when we actually move the progress slider, we want to actually player set, uh, I think it's set position, yeah, set position, and we're going to, you know, set the position. All right, let's give this a good build, and I'm actually going to do a rebuild just because we've been playing around with this. All right, so we got a good build. Let's run this, and if I've done everything right, you'll actually hear music. All right, the world's worst music in the world, I'm sorry. Now, I'm going to show you just a little bit. It's so like we've stopped it and we start it. And we can actually, you know, turn the volume down. And you see, I'm just going to sit here for a minute with my mouse in one spot. You can actually see the progress bar moving. And I'm going to turn the volume back up and then we'll move the progress. I'm sorry you had to listen to that horrible music, ladies and gentlemen. It's the best I could do with, you know, copyright free. There's a lot of starving artists out there. That gentleman may continue to starve. It's just not my taste in music. But uh, anyways, um, I'm sure if he ever heard that, he'd probably sue me. But um, point being, that is how you play an MP3 file. Now, let's talk about some troubleshooting. Let's say you've run this and it doesn't work. It blobbed out some error message. 99% of the time, you need a codec. Um, the way this works, the Q Media Libraries, I'm sorry, I shouldn't call them libraries, the Q Media Classes, they actually used to be called Phonon in Q4, and I think they've just, for whatever reason, marketing maybe, started calling them Q Multimedia. Um, it uses an, an, an engine, basically. So you have a common platform, but your operating system will obviously be different on different operating systems the elusive obvious. So for example, if you're in Linux, you're probably using GStreamer under the hood. If you're on Mac, I have honestly no clue what Mac uses. Um, if you're in Windows, I think you're using, uh, what's that called, Direct Sound? I think it's called Direct Sound. Anyways, it's a derivative of DirectX. So it's one of those things. I may be totally wrong, but um, I believe that's what it uses under the hood. But that's the point, is that all these things have to line up. Your sound system has to be working, your sound card has to be installed correctly, you've got to have the right codec, things like that. So if you download this and it doesn't work, please don't blow up my inbox because I promise you that email is going to sit there for six, seven months before I see it. Instead, join the Facebook group called Void Realms. Can't push that enough. Whew, that was a pretty lengthy tutorial without a whole lot of code. Um, I would highly encourage you to go out and read up on these classes, especially what we just talked about, like multimedia and audio. Um, in the future, if there's a lot of feedback for this, I may actually talk about how to um, put codecs in and how to list the codecs and things like that. And we may actually expand this and build a, a much more robust multimedia player where you can do like a playlist because you can actually write through the classes, make a playlist and do random and sync and all this other stuff. It's actually really well done. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Um, I hope you found this educational and entertaining. And once again, join the Facebook group called Void Realms. And if you feel so inclined, go out to my website, voidrealms.com, and click on Donate, and just donate any amount you feel necessary. But if you're a starving college student, please do not donate. I don't want anybody missing a meal. Uh, I could probably stand to miss a meal now that I think about it. But uh, anyways, um, this site and all the tutorials are 100% funded by your donations. and myself and thousands of people around the world much appreciate it.